The so-called finale to the X trilogy is officially here with Maxine, a movie that I've actually been the most excited for out of this entire trilogy. I really liked X. I liked Pearl, but on rewatches, it just doesn't hold up for me. But I was hoping going into this that Maxine was going to be my favorite out of all of them. The trailers were amazing. A24 is awesome. Ty West is. And of course, we all know Mia Goth is a phenomenal actress. And well, I thought this ending was pretty good. I like the movie, but I didn't love it. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, we're discussing Maxine. In 1985, Hollywood adult film star and aspiring actress Maxine Minx finally gets her big break, but as a mysterious killer stalks the starlets of Hollywood, a trail of blood threatens to reveal her sinister past. Once again, this is directed by Ty West. It stars Mia Goth. It stars also Elizabeth Debicki, this time around Giancarlo Esposito, Halsey, and Kevin Bacon, plus many, many more. And as I mentioned off the top, I was so excited for this. Out of all the films in this trilogy, this trailer looked like my cup of tea. And as an accomplishment with the trailer, I have really much rediscovered and kind of looked at everything and figured that the X trilogy, when it's all said and done, and now that it is all said and done, it's a franchise and a trilogy that I more appreciate than anything else in terms of what it was trying to do and the homages to horror the love letter to horror that it was trying to say whether it was the 60s the 70s and of course now the 80s I've really loved what Ty West has been able to craft here and specifically even Mia Goth and I think it's been an interesting experiment and one that I won't revisit all the time but will be one that I would recommend and one that I would go back and rewatch just again not all the time but I am appreciative of what we have here and I think Maxine only solidifies that a little bit more specifically with the style that Ty West put into this one even if I do wish it maybe was a little bit more substance overall but we're going to talk all about that today make sure to leave your thoughts down below hit that like subscribe button what was your favorite film in the X trilogy I might do a ranking this week let me know down below if you guys would want that if I don't, then I'm sorry. Maybe I'll rank it on my podcast, which you can listen to over on our YouTube channel, Geekverse, or anywhere that you basically listen to audio-only podcasts. But with that said, let's jump into my pros, which my number one thing out of this entire X trilogy, but specifically Maxine, is Mia Goth. Mia Goth is an actress that I have absolutely loved seeing in roles over like the last decade. It doesn't matter where it is, whether it's A Cure for Wellness or even smaller films such as Mayday, which is incredibly underrated if you have not seen that movie. Definitely go check it out. But anytime she shows up in something, it's like a I have to watch it because she is one of those actresses that is daring, that is brave, that is very bold, very creepy at times, but also at the same time, just exquisite and incredible to always see her craft. And this entire ex trilogy again has been just nonstop showcase for her acting capabilities. Pearl X and now specifically Maxine, which kind of just looks at her as where she comes from X being the final girl there and where it lands her now. And she's bold in here once again. I really loved her performance. Is it my favorite out of the three of X? I, I don't know. They're all so different. But she is she's just great. I mean, there, there's no count against that. And the rest of the cast this time around, I think even is elevated a little bit more specifically with what they're able to do. And I think a lot of that also goes down just to Elizabeth Debicki, who is phenomenal. And I love what she does in here. Giancarlo Esposito is having the time of his life in this movie. And Kevin Bacon is just specifically just wild in this i even really liked like what they do with michelle monaghan and i wish a little bit more of her was there which we'll talk about more when we get into my issues with the film and alongside that i mentioned that it's a love letter to many different things and each of these films very much have been but i find that this one is the biggest love letter out of them all for every single piece of 80s media and some of that is video nasty horror films which were a big prevalent piece of during that time or maybe even la noirs during that time which was something that i wasn't actually expecting to get out of here i was more expecting to get more of the video nasty type of love letter here but we actually get more of a love letter to an la noir and in the end of the day i would actually categorize this film as yeah still horror for the most part because of what it's dealing with but definitely more leaning towards the noir side, which I just don't think we get enough of those films nowadays. And I'm happy to see that Ty West leaned into that flavor. And then, of course, it's a love letter to 80s horror as well. So, like, you have all these different thematics and all these different love letters that are coming together 
And from what Ty West was able to do from the editing department, from the cinematography, from the production designer as a director, he was able to direct everything to really come and feel like it was from that time period. And also as a great extension to this entire trilogy. And again, as I mentioned off the top, a great experiment for how these films were produced, how they were created, how the stories flow from one another, and overall what they are for and I really just dug that. And I love Ty West as a director here and specifically now getting to look back and see what he's now crafted. I think it's honestly really interesting and I'm excited to see whatever he does next now. Also leading from that, a lot of the brutality in here is still there. And that was actually another thing that I was interested to see how they were able to keep that involved with Maxine. I was even more interested with how they were going to keep it within Pearl and they were able to do it. So how are you going to do it now with more civilians around and her trying to become this aspiring actress and much find a way around there due to this killer that is stalking the streets and also using the Night Stalker as like a piece of media during this time, I think is actually one of the smartest aspects of usage during this time period to build tension. And for specifically people who grew up during that time or have investigated or looked into that, it adds a added layer of tension and again horror to our real world surroundings because that was a real thing that happened alongside other things that get homage in here as you saw like the Bates Motel was in the trailer and I like the usage of that even though it's very small it was nice to see and just all these PTSD things in Maxine's entire past kind of sneaking back up on her and well it just works and I think this entire cast makes it work. And again, like I mentioned, that brutality makes it work. There, There is one opening thing that is so fucking brutal that when it happens, um, there is a guy who sat in front of me who jumped and screamed, like more shrieked with just this, this essence of pain. And I felt it too. And I think a lot of people in the theaters did. And I thought that was a great way to kind of start off like, yep, the brutality is still there, and it only continues throughout the entire story. So if you're hoping that you still get blood and guts, you definitely still get blood and guts here. But as I mentioned, I found this movie to just be good overall. I, I didn't find it to be the most mind-blowing thing in the entire X trilogy, and I think that's okay. I think that is an okay thing. Would I have liked for this movie to be the best thing ever? Yes, of course. But my issues really stem from some of the story. I found that the story was a tad bit predictable in terms of who the killer was and what was going on with that whole situation. And then even then, I felt like they were building up for this to be kind of like this big exploration into Maxine and her whole backstory, and specifically even where X ended off at. And I just didn't think they did enough with that whole element. I actually wish there was more to it. The film was entertaining for sure, but there was just a lot more of style over substance. And I don't, I'm trying not to get into spoilers here, but I, I really wish there was a little bit more there. And also just in the third act itself, I understand what they were going for, but it does get a little bit kooky and takes away from any of the intensity that we may have had in the first two acts as well. And I think when I do look back at this, I think that is one of the things is that the film does have a slower burn, which again might be just be a total homage to some of the older horror films from that era. X was kind of the same way. Pearl was definitely the same way. I just was kind of wanting a little bit more of a flair from Maxine. Very small, small, small issue with the movie. It's nothing that took away from my entertainment. It's just something I wanted a bit more of. It was still entertaining to jump back in and see where Maxine is in her life and to see where she overall ended up with by the end of this trilogy. And I think for me, that was the most satisfying thing. I left the theater feeling satisfied with the ending. So with that said, I found Maxine to be an entertaining love letter to video nasties, LA and wars, and of course, 80s horror. Mia Goth is perfection. Kevin Bacon is wild and Giancarlo Esposito is fantastic. And Ty West overall rounds it all out. It's not the perfect ending I wish the X trilogy, but it's still a good one and one that I would absolutely rewatch again, maybe in times keeps I don't know if I'll go see it again in theaters, but I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. So with all that said, I'm going to give Maxine a B. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts, and of course, until next time, stay classy. Stay classy.